blood pressure drops as blood gets farther from the heart. The heart is a pump, and so it does a pump, and then the blood has to go from the heart all the way around the circulatory system and back to the heart again with the amount of pressure that was pumped right here. So pressure is going to be highest at the moment of the pump in the aorta, and then pressure is going to be very, very lowest at the vena cava. So you can see that in our diagram. In our diagram, on the y-axis we have pressure, in millimeters of mercury and 120 is typically the pressure that is needed um, for the heart to be able to successfully pump the blood all the way around. And then this bottom number, 80, is the pressure that is held in the pump or in the ventricles of the heart even in between heartbeats. So use a red pen and you can write aorta here. Obviously this is going to be the highest pressure in the body as far as blood pressure goes. And then it's going to start dropping. So the next, um, I'm going to actually turn the paper sideways, might be a little bit weird. There, that's not so bad. You can see that, right? So the large distributing arteries. Those would be like the brachiocephalic and the renal artery, etc. You can see that pressure is dropping off a little bit. You still have a, what's called a pulse pressure that you could feel on those arteries. And then we get to the arterioles. You hear in that word oles at the end. This means little arteries. And the pulse pressure, this little squiggly line, disappears by the end of the arterioles. So by the time you get to the tiny capillaries, pressure has gone way down and there is no pulse pressure. So that's good because it means blood flow is always steady through the capillaries. Then the capillaries drop off the oxygen and other goodies at the tissue. They collect the waste product, waste products into veins. You can use a blue pen there. And then, last but not least, the very biggest vein in the body, the vena cava. is going to have the lowest pressure. And in fact, I'm going to turn the paper again. If you look at what the pressure might be in the vena cava, it is so low. We're talking somewhere around three millimeters of mercury. And the arterioles, they typically start, you can't really, um, I, know, I guess my picture is not real great on that, but the capillaries are usually going to be about 35 millimeters of mercury and maybe about 15 by the time you get to the end of the capillaries. The arterioles are going to be somewhere around um, 50 millimeters of mercury. And so we just see this steady drop as we go through the blood system. The arterioles have the greatest impact on blood pressure when they constrict.
So when we talk about vasoconstriction and vasodilation, we're talking at the arterial level, allowing blood flow to go to an organ or not. And then another, so, oh, I wanted to say one more thing before we end this page. So if you were going to be asked a question, uh, where is blood pressure highest in the capillary or of the vena cava, you would say capillary. People tend to think, oh, a smaller blood vessel, lower blood pressure. No, that's actually not the case. It's the distance from the heart. So the aorta is the very closest to the heart. It has this great high blood pressure. And then by the time you get to the capillaries, blood pressure has gone down from, let's say, 120 to somewhere around, I don't know, 30. As it passes through, you can see it's dropping continually. And then it continues to drop so that you barely have enough pressure to get the blood to drop back in to the heart by the time you're, you've come all the way around. You're as far away from the heart as you'll get and then coming back to it. Let's use a green highlighter to highlight the pulse pressure. Oops, sorry, you couldn't see that. So the pulse pressure is the difference, pulse pressure, difference between systolic and diastolic values.